I'm in a group in Facebook and somebody asks, is there like a definitive awakening? And I try to answer that. I don't know if there are some kind of a stage which is definitive, especially also when I'm trying to do your, it feels like it's like more a way of humility maybe that every moment the life is checking if I learn the lesson maybe or is there a moment where you just always can follow or do or be I try to paraphrase your question what you're asking me is is there a point at which one is awakened or enlightened or where after which one can assume that life is not going to slap one anymore and the answer to that is that it depends on what you want so there are those that seek enlightenment and enlightenment is actually a state where there is very little connection with the actual body and the larger experience is of the cosmic state and the body and this world around is sort of there but it is experienced as an illusion and not as real that's when people say this is an awakened person this is an enlightened being The problem with this idea of enlightenment is that it generally is detaching from the reality of life itself. It's detaching from the reality of the body and instead of transforming the circumstances around it detaches, I am not this, I am not this pain, I am not this suffering, I am not this body, I am not this jealousy, I am not this anger. But the fact of the matter is that when there is an embodied being, when there is a body, then that body faces these things and if the circumstances are not changed, the suffering continues and the detachment continues and at one point the person doesn't know anymore what is going on around them they've lost a connect with the actual material reality of life the other side of the story is the self-realization process which is a acceptance that this this body, this thing that we that we call this that this is what it's about and that which is the soul is what we bend to in humility and you brought up that word humility and it's exactly what it's about it's about humility, the ultimate surrender to the soul, to the soul, bending, bending, bending. This is an instrument of that truth, right from here all the way down to the toes, is an instrument. And this instrument is in continuous action, impulsed by the truth of the being. And how do I get that impulse of the truth? In that I bend in surrender. I start to feel the soul, the source, the truth of my being moving me into action. There is no awakening. It's not about awakening. There's no sleeping and no awakening. It is about bending down. There's no detaching, I'm not this, I'm not that. It is, I am an instrument in surrender to my master, 
which is the soul, which is the source. And that is Self-Realization. And it is a process that continues throughout life, till the very last breath in the body. Deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. An instrument of the Truth. More and more and more, I am yours. I am yours, I am yours, I am yours, I am yours. So there is no final thing where you are Self-realized and now you can just do anything you want. No, you are always more Self-realized and the and the, the ego and its machinations becomes more and more subtle and you become more and more clever in detecting it and more and more humble in being an instrument of the Truth. Very fascinating process. And it's... it's... the key to life being joyous for what it actually is. Life is a joyous thing, it's not a suffering thing. It helps me to clear all the mess in my head. I had a, a very strong pain in my back. It was very, very strong and, and in this moment I felt like maybe some kind of God came to me to give me this kind of answer that this pain doesn't exist and my body doesn't exist also. So it feels a bit like this going away, but in this moment it was just so real and then the pain goes away and I I felt that I didn't feel empty and I wasn't gone. That that happened to me also that I was just like <laughs> um but this this was very present and the, the pain disappeared also. So maybe you can yeah. um. This is the miracle. This is something that happens to you when you are on that process of Self-Realization. So it is not you that is standing there and saying, I'm not this and I'm not that and I'm not this body and you don't have to say all those things. There are moments when a person who is on a Self-Realization path or a Self-Realization experience or existence will need to have that experience in order to, let's say, deal with pain. And it's not just physical pain, it can also be emotional pain. It can be transformative pain. It will happen automatically. You don't have to bring it as a conceptual process. Which is what a lot of the Neo-Advaitins do. The Neo-Advaita approach, which is, I am not... I am not this and I am not that and I am not the other. Neti, neti, neti. But neti, neti, the concept of neti, neti, not this, not that, is an experience. It is not something which you do. It's like celibacy. Celibacy is something that happens to you. When it is required on a spiritual path, you will automatically become celibate. But what has happened out of that? It has been twisted. And now people force themselves to be celibate and create a whole big mess because of that. It's the same thing with Neti Neti. Neti Neti happens at the right moment. That's what you experienced. The pain had to go. And there was a humility. And it just happened. You didn't have to say, I'm not this pain, I'm not this body, and force yourself into all those strange thoughts. You see? Yes. As you go into that Self-Realization, you will have these experiences when they are required. Because I, I was someplace where they say, like, I am not the body, I did. And inside of me, I felt very strong to say, but I am also the mind, I am also the body. I feel that, so I understand now. That's a miracle that has come to you mm -hmm. after you realize that it makes no sense to say, I am not... How can anyone in their right senses say, I am not the body? One has to just look at someone like this and say, 
This is conceptual gymnastics. And all you'll develop is a conceptual muscle, but nothing more and nothing less. It's a twisting of things, and it has to be untwisted. And that is what my work is. That is what my Agnya is, to untwist this for those who come to me. It's a big aberration on the spiritual trajectory, a complete misrepresentation and misunderstanding of what this whole thing is about. Thank you.